Secrets, Easter eggs, and bonus levels are probably some of the most fun things in video games. Bonus levels in particular can be really exciting, and we want to talk about some of them. Today in Gaming, we're going to talk about 10 of the best secret levels of all time. We've got many more examples that we can't fit into this video, so be sure to let us know your favorites in the comments for future videos. Anyway, let's get started at number 10. We're going to get started off with a pretty simple and fun one. In the original Command and Conquer Red Alert, you can unlock a series of four missions that put you against a slew of giant ant enemies. That's it, you're fighting big freaking ants. To get the giant ant levels, you first need to have the Counter-Strike expansion installed. It's worth noting that if you have the modern EA Classic version of Red Alert, the expansions aren't included by default, so this won't work. But from there, you simply need to hold shift and click on the speaker on the side of the menu screen. It's really that simple. Just make sure you have the right expansions, click that stuff, and you're on your way to crush some big ants after seeing a really cool FMV sequence of a big ant on top of a mountain of human bones. It's dumb, it's campy, and it's really, really fun, and honestly, sometimes that's all we really want or need from a secret level. Moving on to number 9, so at this point, Warcraft 3 is a total classic, and the things it spawned, you know, like Dota, have become bigger than even the source material, but that doesn't mean there isn't still some cool secret stuff in that original game. Take the tower level for example. In the third mission of the human campaign, where you and the elves are breaking out of a prison, you can find a winding corridor around the center of the map. This corridor will have several rooms you need to enter, eventually finding one with three different colored sheeps surrounded by auras. With push panels in front of them. If you push the panels in the correct order, you'll gain access to the secret tower defense level. The level, called the crossing, is a straight up tower defense level. You've got to defend your portal from advancing enemy forces by building various towers around the map. It's an interesting choice for a secret because it's so different from the standard RTS and hero stuff you're doing in the main game, and it's fun to see the developer step out of the box and make something different and tuck it away so only the most dedicated fans can find it. And if you beat it, you unlock the Pandaren Brewmaster as a playable hero for the next chapter, so that's a pretty cool reward if you ask me. Next up at number 8 we have Tenchu Wrath of Heaven. This game has an unlockable level titled Through the Portal. You can only access this level by beating the game on the normal difficulty or higher. What's really interesting about this level is that it's kind of like an epilogue, I guess. At the end of the game as the castle is collapsing, you jump into this portal to escape and it throws you into a whole other dimension, this one being a modern day urban city. The setting itself is what makes this so cool. You're ninja sneaking around a city, which was a departure from the rest of the game. You're sneaking past police officers with guns and nightsticks instead of samurai, and you're also tasked with taking down the CEO of an evil pharmaceutical company who created a deadly disease and sold the cure for a ton of money. The CEO is actually a cyborg and he ends up being the boss fight at the end, and the setting is what made the secret level really cool, honestly. It was just a really fun change and was an awesome little surprise. Next up at number 7, Doom has always been known for its secrets since the first game released in 1993, as has Wolfenstein, but we'll get to that later. Anyway, Id's love for secrets carried over to Doom 2 as well, one of them being a really cool secret level. In Industrial Zone, there's a teleporter that you can find off the beaten path, and when you go through it, it unlocks Map 31, which is actually an entire recreation of the first level of Wolfenstein 3D. The graphics are more old school, just like they are in 1992's Wolfenstein 3D. Even the secrets from the map from the OG game are included in the Doom 2 version of it. So if you already knew the in and outs of this level, you could find all those same secrets here. There are some differences though, for example, instead of guard dogs, there are demons, and once you beat the level, you have the option to jump back into the Doom 2 campaign, or you can move on to the next secret level, which is another Wolfenstein map, except this time you have to fight a cyber demon. Neat little secrets like this actually carried on to the newer Doom and Wolfenstein games, which is great, because the secrets in these games were always a blast to uncover. Next up at number 6, sometimes getting something extra is as easy as just, you know, beating the game. When you finish Medal of Honor Underground's final mission, Liberation, you unlock access to the optional post-game mission, Panzernacher Unleashed. The mission, which is divided into three separate levels, takes you deep into a Nazi castle in the eastern reaches of the Black Forest containing a mysterious Nazi laboratory. It's a pretty standard FPS level in structure, but it stands out because of how different and weird the encounters are when compared to the rest of the game, which is, for all intents and purposes, a pretty straightforward and relatively serious World War II story. This level, though, is very much not that. You're going to be facing off with spooky dogs, medieval knights, exploding soldiers, stuff like that. That's not even including the Panzernockers themselves, which are a big, robotic, 
nutcracker. So yeah, it's a bit off the rails in the best possible way, and we are not at all complaining. And at number 5, we have the Liberty Island bonus level from Freedom Fighters. First off, can we just take a minute to talk about how awesome Freedom Fighters is? Damn, just what a video game. Yo, Io, if you're watching this, actually, we know you own the rights to the IP, so how about another one? Please? Word? Cool? Anyway, Freedom Fighters has a secret Liberty Island level that you can unlock by beating the game on one of the two highest difficulties. The level itself is pretty short and isn't anything too crazy, but what makes it so cool is the fact that it's Liberty Island. Seeing that the whole game is about leading the resistance against an invading Soviet Union in New York, you get to see a lot of New York City. So getting to see Liberty Island is just one more location you get to see, and it's awesome. The Statue of Liberty is destroyed, so you're fighting on top of the wreckage, and you can see Lady Liberty's head and torch, and it's just a really cool set piece. Growing up in New York and seeing the Statue of Liberty in real life and then getting to see it like this in Freedom Fighters as a kid was just an awesome experience. Coming in at number 4, we have not one, but two GoldenEye bonus levels. First up, we have the Aztec level, which is based on the James Bond movie Moonraker. You unlock this level by completing the game on the Secret Agent difficulty. This level also has a weapon that's unique to it, the Moonraker lasers. This level is also known as one of the harder levels in the game. The enemies themselves are harder than they are in other levels, and to unlock the other secret level, you actually need to beat this level and the rest of the game on the Double O Agent difficulty, making this one pretty damn hard, seeing that it's harder to begin with. The next secret level is Egyptian. This map isn't actually based on a certain movie, although some think it's based on the Egypt scenes from The Spy Who Loved Me. What's really cool about this level is you fight Baron Samedi, the dude from Live and Let Die, and this is also the only level that the Golden Gun appears on without using cheats, that is. And if you're into Goldeneye, you know how cool the Golden Gun is. I mean, come on. Moving on to number 3, we have another id shooter secret, this time we're talking about Wolfenstein 3D. Like I said before, id has always been about secrets in their games, and the same goes for this one. This secret level though, is actually pretty unique because it's Pac-Man themed. This level is located in episode 3, floor 10, and it's actually a remake of a Pac-Man level, and there are Pac-Man ghosts that are hunting you down and trying to kill you. And they are absolutely terrifying. Even more terrifying if you play it on Mac because they're like textured differently. It actually plays is just like Pac-Man, like you're running around collecting treasures instead of fruit and you're just trying to make it to the end. Running around in a Nazi castle, collecting treasures and avoiding the Pac-Man ghosts of all things is as absurd as it sounds and it's also an absolute blast. Next to number two, sometimes game developers use secret levels stashed away from the average player to display some of their hardest, most challenging stuff, and that's definitely the case with Super Mario World. Tubular, a level in the game's special zone, the ninth and final area in the game that can only be accessed by a secret star road in the star world is definitely one of those levels. Tubular consists of singular, very long, six dragon coins and a single exit, and pretty much requires you to use either the cape feather or the power balloon if you want to even have a chance at completing it. Then you gotta get across a really wide pit and dodge a bunch more enemies using a power balloon. It's worth noting that you can do it all in one shot with the cape feather, but it's more difficult and requires absolute precision. We love to see this stuff because, like Mario in particular, has always been one of the most accessible games ever, and before the days of brutal Mario Maker levels, stuff like this was few and far between, so we definitely respect and appreciate it. Finally, at number one, this is definitely one of the most popular and infamous secret levels of all time and has been a subject of interest for so long due to its absolute absurdity as well as its soul-crushing difficulty. And that's the cow level from Diablo 2. So to get to the secret cow level, you first have to open a portal. It's worth noting that this is specifically an endgame activity, so if you haven't already killed Diablo or Baal, depending on whether or not you have the expansion, you can't open the portal. But if you have, you can do this by finding the item Wurt's leg from his corpse in Northwest Tristram. You take that and you combine it with a scroll of town portal and the Haradra cube while standing in the rogue encampment. You'll know if you did it right if a red portal opens up. Hop in there and you're in it. Once aside, you'll find a relatively small zone packed with cows standing upright with pole arms, as well as a special enemy unit called the Cow King. It's definitely one of the more interesting secret levels out there, and it's a testament to it and Diablo 2 that we're still here talking about it almost 20 years later. 
And those are 10 of the best secret levels of all time, but we want to hear from you. So meet us down in the comments and let us know what you think. Have any of you experienced any of these secret levels and what are some other ones that you have? Because we want to hear about them. Maybe there's room for another video. As I'm sure you already know, hitting the like button really helps us out. And if you're new here, subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos like this every single day. As always, thank you for stopping by and taking the time to hang out with us. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.